And so the journey began. Snortius the Great stood with his long spear at the prow of his mighty ship as his loyal men bustled around, working feverishly, raising the anchor, hoisting the mizzenmast, battening down the hatches. All of that work sounded really important and grand inside Snortius' head, but only a handful of snotlings were paddling the raft and the rest were bored and picking their noses, an important custom of the peoples of Snotopia. But the rest and relaxation was not to last, because the keen eyes of Snortius saw trouble ahead. Rapids, churning, foaming, dangerous rapids. Snotius also noted the dark shapes in the water beneath the raft. Oh, hang your deck! Do the thing what makes us not crash! The raft was a fine, sturdy vessel, but it essentially was a large brick made out of wood, and it handled as such. The green skins were knocked around in the rapids, hitting rock after rock. Snotius managed to keep his feet all the way through the rapids, but with one staggering shock, the raft pitched forwards, and three snotlings fell into the great river. Snortius looked over the side of the raft to see who had fallen in. Snore Sleeper, an extremely lazy snotling. He had fallen asleep at the paddle and been the one responsible for the big collision. Bash Skull, who had spored back in Skull Stanbull some time ago. And Soggy, who was a very young snotling who actually didn't have a name until he fell into the Great River and Snortius decided Soggy was an utmost appropriate name. Not hesitating for a moment, Snortius grabbed his spear, and with a loose bit of rope and the other snots and grots held on to the other end to anchor him, the great mutant snot boss placed his feet on the edge of the raft, and with one great swing of his spear swept up all three snotlings, their bodies draped over the shaft of his spear, just as the river monsters were swarming to gobble them up. Snortius unceremoniously dumped them on the deck of the raft. Snore Sleeper immediately grabs his weapon, his trusty rock on a stick, and curls up with the intention of using it as a pillow. Snortius scoffs and gives Snore Sleeper a good cuff across the ears. Stay awake, you stupid git! Snortius quickly selected three new stick snots to fend the raft away from any dangerous rocks. Fortunately, the worst of the rapids were behind them, and the green skins entered a different section of the forest. It was deep and dark, with huge trees with thick trunks. It looked similar to the place where the great horned beast was slain. The great river itself became wider and calmer. The air seemed to go still. The green skins could not hear the sounds of any animals, save for the buzz of insects. Not even birds were stirring in this portion of the great forest. The sun was sinking below the horizon. It would be night soon. While the green skins had decent night vision, it was still typically more dangerous. Predators and such were likely to be out and about. So Snortius ordered that his snots bring the raft to shore. Now was a good time to set up camp and rest for the evening. The mutant snot boss set his companions to work, sending most of the snots and grots to digging a large communal burrow near the river bank. They just needed a simple place to bed for the night without getting attacked. De Brain was tasked with starting a fire as the rest of the green skins retrieved their rations and began to eat. During the meal, Snotius stood on a stump, and in the ancient tradition of Snotopia that he made up just now, he began to tell the story of the founding of Snotantinople. The saga of the Archgit Skullbash's treachery. When they got to the part where Snortius headbutted Skullbash, the Snotboss demonstrated the act on Stinky, who happened to be standing nearby. 
Snotius also detailed the rise of the Grots, and how Snotius rose from the ashes to claim victory and the title of Unburnable. The wide eyes of the young Snotlings glistened in the moonlight as they listened in awe of the great history laid out before them. Their hearts were aflame with pride. They were now determined to make their own mark on this world. But it was now time to sleep. Tomorrow was going to be a new day, with endless possibilities for the Greenskins to fulfill their dreams of glory. Snotius set a watch for the night and began gathering his things to stow in the burrow. He was glad he had enough boys that he didn't have to stay awake himself and stay on watch. As he packed all the gear in the back of the burrow, he heard a strange sound. What? Snotius popped his head up and looked around. He saw nothing. But he saw nothing where there should be something. One of the snots on watch had vanished. The snot boss sniffed the air with his nose, which twitched as he detected the pungent odor of blood. The young snot Deadzo had vanished. The whole camp was put on high alert. There were gits about. Snotius scanned the darkness for enemies. Then he saw it. A strange creature loping its way through the trees. It was a furry creature with long arms swinging from tree limb to tree limb. Snotius and Debrain leveled their weapons and prepared to fire. Right before Snotius was about to pull the trigger, a frightened little snot who wasn't too bright by the name of Stinky Junior stood a little too close to the fire and let out a small fart in fear of the large hairy creature. This caused the fire to flare up and catch the snot's backside aflame briefly. His squeak distracted Snotius and threw off his aim, causing him to miss. The brain, however, maintained his focus and hit the creature dead on, and it fell out of the tree with a dull thud. Snotius approached the thing. It was covered in a dark reddish sort of fur. It had long clawed arms and sharp biting teeth. It was a bit bigger than Snotius himself, who was by far the largest of the Greenskins. Held in the creature's claws were the remains of Deadzo. It looked like it chomped the poor head of the creature off first, possibly to silence him, and then began to gnaw on the rest of him before the brain burned a neat hole in the side of the creature's head. Snotius was about to kneel by the creature and try to harvest its teeth, when he suddenly felt Strong hands clamped down on his shoulders as he was hauled up into the trees. Cries rang out from the green skins below as Snotius struggled for his life. The snot boss wrestled with the creature, and it was strong. Dead strong. Snotius tried to reach for his weapons, but this gittish creature had hands on its feet like a cheater, and Snotius couldn't get a clear shot on his attacker. A few las blasts fired into the canopy, but nothing struck the terrifying beast. Snotius snarled as he fought viciously to free himself. He chomped down on the creature's hand, which caused the beast to try to crush Snotius' head, just as Deadzo's was. Fortunately for Snotius, he was wearing the skull bucket that he had looted from the Humies. The powerful jaws of the beast cracked the helmet and caused it to clatter to the forest floor. Snotius tried to bring his spear around, but the beast was just too strong, and swatted the weapon away. It was about to chomp his head again when a blast came from the forest floor. The brain took careful aim, and shot the creature right in the chest as it reared up to chomp down on the head of the snot boss. Both the monster and Snotius plunged to the forest floor. Snotius hit the ground first with a heavy splat. The creature, of course, landed on top of him. A dozen tiny green hands hauled the body of the creature off Snotius, who was looking quite worse for wear. He was bruised all over. His helmet was destroyed, 
and his body was racked with pain. Boys, I think it's time for bed. Watch snorts, stay near the borough, and don't go under the trees. Ever. Ugh, rouse the boys if the long arm gets come down. And thanks, Brain. You're as useful as Stinky is useless. The Brain nodded silently to his boss. With the excitement of the night ended, the green skins all went to bed except for the watch snots. Fortunately, everyone survived until morning without further incident. When they awoke, the two bodies of the strange creatures were nowhere to be seen, likely dragged off by something. On the water again, let's get out of here. The green skins hopped back on the raft and resumed their journey downstream. It wasn't long before the forest began to look brighter and less dense again, with thinner younger trees dominating the landscape. The green skins were quick to recover from their wounds, but Snotius was not quite 100% again yet. The raft wound its way lazily down the river. Snotius was in no rush. He wanted to have a bit of time to get unsmashed after his run-in with the night monsters. After a little while, Snotius saw something. A thin line of smoke rising up from the tree line. Stop the boat. Let's take a look. The snotlings paddled the raft to the riverbank as the green skins climbed a small hill to investigate the strange smoke. As they crested the hill, Snotius looked down and saw Humies. Lots of Humies, or at least more Humies than he'd ever seen. Below him was a Humi settlement, bigger than Snotantinople itself. There were fields and pens and strange machines that trundled around on wheels. Trucks. Trucks is what he would call them. There were also plenty of Humies wandering around and mucking about. Well, looks like we's ready to win some more glory for Snotantinople, boys. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that you won't be hauled away by flesh-eating ape creatures in the middle of the night. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about intrepid greenskins striking out into the unknown to kill gits. If you would like to support me, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal. Both of those are linked below in the description. And if you have no idea what's going on, you can click on the Growing the Tribe playlist to listen to the story from the beginning. And that should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all again for listening. No Man Out.